here's a website, therequo.com. Clearly one of the best looking websites on the planet, of course, but let's actually look at the source code, shall we? We right click, view source, and what? Where's the code? There's no code here? Nothing? Nada? How? Well, let me explain. Let me give you guys some context here before we jump right in. Two months ago, I created my blog, basically it redirects to a music video composed with, you know, intricate, yeah, okay, it's a rickroll, but obviously people were very happy about it, you know, like very much flattered by my research blog. Um, I was having the fun of my day, right? Until this dude out of nowhere comes with a PSA. Instead of visiting the web page and getting rickrolled, he tries to uncover the code behind the website. As you can see, this is the code. Uh, I was just simply redirecting the page uh, with a location assignment in JavaScript once the page was loaded. It was pretty simple, actually too simple. Anyone could have you know, seen through it easily. So I decided to make this a bit harder, you know, like a bit more hidden. Okay, now check this out. Well, it's not that obvious, right? I'm including some Google Analytics code, people ignore that usually, and then I'm including the safe.js. This simply console logs and reloads the page. But what people don't know is the fact that the script that's coming from Google is actually an injected one. Basically, uh, it's a gadget, I can inject some code, and I would get back the same thing, and people would think it's legit coming from Google and ignore it generally speaking. Then this injected code would basically register a service worker, which would act as a proxy. Whenever the page is loaded, it would make a request to fetch the save.js script, right? But this service worker would intercept that and change its content to, of course, redirect to Rickroll page. Cool, right? Big brain very much. Um, well, not exactly because someone else figured that one out as well. So I thought there was no way to hide the code and I pretty much forget about it and move on. Time passes by and in the last two weeks, uh, you know, I've been sleeping a lot because of the COVID situation. But honestly, I think I was just probably being lazy using the COVID situation as a reason to watch a ton of anime, but whatever. Anyways, during this time, I remember the same tweet and I thought, so is there really no way to hide the code so people can't simply view the source and see through it. Well, we can obfuscate the code um, and make it harder to debug, but it's not that interesting. We want to hide the code, not obfuscate the code. So I thought to myself, look soldier, you have a mission at hand. You need to do this. You got this. And then I spent the next uh, few days uh, just wasting my time on this. And that's how the Mission Impossible 9 HTTP protocol started. By the way, I didn't name this Mission HTTP protocol because it's similar to the Mission Impossible 4 ghost protocol. But it's because the answer lies in the HTTP protocol. You see, the HTTP responses doesn't just have your HTML markup. It does have other things such as the metadata and also configuration information uh, in the headers and stuff like that. The HTTP response usually looks something like this. There's the response line which tells the version and the status code. Then comes the header section which tells the browser uh, a lot more information about the page like rendering type, uh, the content type, is it HTML or is it an image, things like that. Then finally, there's the body. Whenever someone views the source, they see only the body and not the headers. Now I thought to myself, we want the body to be empty. Uh, so is there some kind of a header that I can set, uh, which will have all the code for the web page so that it wouldn't show up in the actual paid source? So I went on to searching for this header. And of course, I resort to calling a dear friend from the intelligence who is going to definitely help me in this case, and his name is <coughs> Google. Um, so I Google for a list of all the HTTP headers. I read each one by one until this one stood out, and it's the link header. 
this header is the same as the link element apparently, uh, which has the ability to include some style sheets or basically CSS files. Since I'm a very busy individual, uh, I didn't bother reading the whole thing or, uh, you know, whatever. I just resorted to my old friend again. So I googled link style sheets for uh, HTTP link header and um, it's right there. So we can just simply add the CSS file and then say rel equals style sheet and that should work, right? Okay, let's give it a shot. I quickly set up a simple Python Flask server to test this out, set some headers, and we set some text markup for now, uh, so that if the header is included in the style sheet, then it should change its color to red. Um, that's how I confirm if it, if it works or not. All right, so I test it and it doesn't work. The reason why it didn't work is because uh, it's Chrome. Sadly, it only works on Firefox, so, Basically, I wasted my time here, right? <laughs> well, let's keep going, let's keep going. Okay, so let's uh, try this in Firefox, and it seems to work. And maybe for the Chrome, we can do a fallback trick. Um, I'll show you later. Okay, now we have a way to include a style sheet, but how do we add text? Well, there's the content property in CSS that can be used to, you know, add a value as a string to an element. But, hold on a minute, there are no elements because our entire HTML body is empty, right? Well, it's blank, but the browsers automatically create some default elements like HTML, head, and body for us. So that's, that's all we need, really. So now I spent a few minutes to create this masterpiece, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, it simply makes the head element block so that it's visible on the page. And then we set its background image to our, of course, the greatest meme of all time. And we also set the content of the body before uh, to never gonna give you up. Uh, and finally, we set some you know, keyframe animations to uh, have this little cursor blinking or whatever. You can, you can get creative here. Uh, it's totally up to you. Sweet, now we have a web page. If someone visits this web page in the Firefox browser uh, and they try to view the source, it's gonna be absolutely empty. Let's, let's try that out. And beautiful, it works like a charm. But of course, uh, if they pull up DevTools, uh, they can see what's going on exactly. So what an absolute waste of time. But let's be honest here. How many of you are gonna actually pull up a dev tools. That's right, nobody. Just as lazy as I am. So, welcome to the club. So for people who use Chrome, we can use a lesser known uh, HTTP header to redirect to the original music video. We gotta get that billion views, right? <laughs> okay, so the header that I'm talking about is the refresh header. I tried searching some specifications or something and I couldn't find any. Apparently this is not a uh, you know, a part of the HTTP standard. And in this mailing list, it says, I think refresh as a HTTP header is not specified anywhere. So as per spec, it shouldn't work. However, I think the browsers allow it. So they should basically specify it. Well, yeah, sure, but they don't. That's kind of sus, you know what I'm saying? But we can use this header in the same way as the meta tag uh, with refresh works. And all we have to do is just specify the amount of time and the URL that you wanna redirect to. After the specified amount of time, it's gonna automatically redirect to that web page. Pretty cool. Okay, we've done it. We've created a website, an absolute masterpiece. If you visit the web page in Firefox, it will basically show you the GIF and redirect. If you visit the web page in Chrome, it's just gonna redirect. But in the end, there's no source code. I mean, you can still pull up DevTools and inspect and see the code, but it's not in the view page source, but it's in the DevTools. Okay, this whole thing is a waste of time. I get it anyways, thanks for watching. I think we did some research here. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace.